Okay, so we'll uh, uh, continue with the uh, models for electrical uh, double layers. Uh, so what we were trying to do in the previous lecture was uh, uh, looking at a potential distribution near a, a planar surface. We took a one-dimensional case. Uh, that means we were trying to solve one-dimensional Poisson equation, and uh, this is what the expression is. Right, and we would like to solve this at uh, the boundary conditions that at x is equal to uh, zero, potential is the poten potential at the surface itself, and at x is equal to infinity, the potential is going to be zero. Right, the potential would be zero to infinity because either the concentration of ions at infinity is zero, or it is such that the concentration of positive ions and negative ions is equal such that the overall potential gets cancelled. Okay, that's the reason why at x is equal to infinity, uh, psi is going to be zero. Okay, uh, and we said that if you really want to solve this, I would somehow want to express uh, rho star in terms of psi. Okay, and this uh, so the way to do this would be uh, <coughs> we know that the rho star, which is the the charge density, right? the charge density uh, would be related to again the concentration of ions that you have in the solution right and we had said that this ni is related to ni infinity that is the concentration of ith type of ions in solution it it is it depends on what is the concentration of the same species at infinity multiplied by a factor which is Okay, which is exponent of minus z i e times psi divided by k b t. Okay, that is what we had mentioned right and if I know n i star I can get uh, rho star because you know uh, n i is related to psi therefore, I am able to express uh, uh, rho star in terms of uh, psi okay, that is the that is what we, we were trying to do. Okay. <coughs> and, uh, uh, so, in this uh, uh, Boltzmann factor, uh, this quantity z i e psi uh, tells you something about <coughs> what is the, the work that has to be done uh, to bring any specific ion. Okay. In this case, we are considering n i okay, okay, to bring it from infinity okay, to a position where the, the potential is psi. Okay, and that work that has to be done is given by z i times e, you know, z i times e times psi. Okay, <coughs> yeah. Rho is also a function of x. So, so when I said this psi is actually psi also is a function of x. No, no. Rho, we defined rho star as the. Uh, <coughs> let's go back. Right. The way the rho star was defined uh, here, okay, right? We define it as a charge density. Okay, so now, so so basically, it depends on the distribution of ions in the solution, right? If you look at a, if if you look at um, uh, a charged surface, okay, um, we know that the concentration of uh, counter ions in solution. If you look at the concentration, okay, let's go back to this model, right? <coughs> if I look at this model, let's take uh, you know a finite volume here, and finite volume somewhere there, and finite volume some other distance, okay, at very far away distance, okay. Now, if you look at uh, you know the fact that you know the the concentration of counter ions is going to be higher here, right? Uh, and if you were to account for the polarity, everything, okay, there'll be some um, uh, you know rho star that you can calculate right which basically is the number of ions that you have per unit volume that I am taking right if I take a finite volume okay uh, however if I go to a very far uh, if I if I look at you know uh, I mean okay j let's say I am taking a similar volume here the fact that you know I have you know both positive and negative and if they are in equal number your rho star is going to be zero right because you know there is a contribution that, from, that comes from the the positive ion there is also a contribution that comes from negative ion. So, if you, you can say that overall charge density though though even though it is number mm -hmm. right 
I mean, in the, this is the total charge per unit volume, right? The total, this is not the number, right? This is not the number density. Mm -hmm. It is the, it is the charge density. That means, if I have a, a ion wh whose variance is I, okay, multiplied by E, okay, multiplied by the total is, is, is a number as well, right? Mm -hmm. The total charge divided by the unit volume, right? So, in, if I go to a very far away distance, uh, the fact that you know you will have an equal probability of finding both positive and negative ions. So, I am going to have a charge density which could be minus Z i times E divided by volume times the number for example, and plus Z i times E multiplied by number by volume right. Therefore, that becomes essentially 0. Okay. So, this is actually rho star is actually spatially varying when you think about um, yeah the total charge in the whole system is going to be uh, yeah electrically neutral. Okay. Okay, so, we were talking about the Boltzmann factor, right. So, this essentially tells you what is the, the work that is required to bring an ion of a specific type from infinity to. Uh, so, now if you look at this expression, right, um, uh, so the work that one has to do depends on the local constant, what is the local psi, okay. Um, that means we know that you know psi varies in a particular way. If I look at some position here, and some position here or some position very very far away for example. Okay. So, that means, I would have to spend less work to bring an ion to this location, but however, if I if I want to go closer to this you know to the charge surface because of the fact that psi is going to be higher, psi is going to be highest at the surface uh, that is psi naught. Okay. Therefore, if I want to move uh, any ion to a location much closer to the charge surface, I would have to do more work. Okay. And uh, so, this quantity essentially tell you the, what is the probability of finding okay, an ion at this position, okay, at any location that I am looking at. Okay, what is the probability of finding an ion of that type at a particular location is what this quantity essentially gives you. Okay. Um, where n i is the, the number of ions per unit volume. Okay. Uh, uh, at any location, okay, need not be near the surface. It at, at any location in the vicinity of the uh, charge surface, and n i infinity is the concentration of uh, ions far away from the surface. Okay, that is, you can think about if I have added, if I have taken a charged surface, okay, and uh, say it's positive or negatively charged. If I have added, say, one millimolar salt concentration to the solution, okay, this n i. Uh, you know, you can, uh, infinity can be considered as the the bulk concentration. Okay, it can be considered as a the concentration of the electrolyte that I have added. Okay, and Z i of course is the valency of the ions. So depending upon whether you are talking about uh, you know um, uh, monovalent uh, ions or divalent ion, you know Z i can be you know okay, plus one or minus one or plus two or minus two depending upon you know what kind of ions that you are working with. Okay. Um, so, you can actually think about uh, see this Boltzmann factor, right? You can actually derive an expression for Boltzmann factor if you know a little bit about uh, you know uh, uh, chemical equilibria of electrolyte solutions. Okay? So, we know that uh, uh, in solution thermodynamics, we talk about uh, chemical equilibrium, right? Uh, mu i, which is the, the chemical potential, uh, is equal to mu i 0, which is the chemical potential of the species, you know, of any species or any chemical in the in the standard state, right? Plus R T L N A I, okay? Where A I is what is called as a activity coefficient, okay? Now, when you are working with ideal solution, you can replace activity coefficient with, you know, mole fraction or molar concentration of you know ions in solution. Therefore, mu I becomes mu I naught plus R T L N X I, okay? Now, the condition for, you know, uh, a solution to be in a thermodynamic equilibrium is that d mu i is going to be 0, right. Therefore, so d mu i is going to be d f mu i 0 plus d f r t l n x i, right. And because d mu i 0 is the either is the chemical potential in the standard state, okay, that is going to be 0. Therefore, d mu i becomes r t into d because you know I'm, if I am working at the constant temperature, I can take R t out, right. So, d mu i essentially becomes R t d l n 
x i ok. So, which essentially tells you that and because of the fact that you know this uh, uh, chemical potential has to be 0 therefore, r t d l n x i is equal to 0 or d l n x i is equal to 0 which tells you that you know this l n of x i should be constant which gives you that, that, that x i is equal to x i infinity that means, if for a any solution to be in chemical equilibrium the concentration of species at any location is same as is same everywhere ok. That means, if I have a container ok and uh, like say for example, uh, I, have, I have an ACL for example ok. Uh, of course, this is an ionic uh, state, but I you know I can take a mixture of two species for example ok. That means, if I go to some location I look at the concentration of uh, say species A and B in one location and if I look at the concentration of A and B in, in the another location the concentration here and here is going to be exactly same ok. That is what this expression essentially tells you ok. That is you know when you talk about chemical equilibrium ok. However, in, in the what we are looking at is a case where you have charged species as well right it is you know we should ok. When we talk about uh, uh, charged species I have a you can think about you know I have a electrolyte solution ok. Similar to chemical potential you can define something called as a electrochemical potential ok which is mu e that is the electrochemical potential which is summation of uh, the contribution that comes from the, the chemical potential plus an additional term ok. And uh, this additional term in this additional term uh, again z i is the, the valency of the ions f is what is called as the Faraday constant and psi is what is called as a local electrostatic potential ok. Um, and this Faraday constant uh, it, it is equal to uh, the charge of the electron multiplied by um, N A V that is N A V is the Avogadro number ok. So, therefore, when you talk about electrochemical potential you can you can say that there is for each ionic species in solution ok there is a an electrochemical potential at any given location ok. It depends on you know the constituents of the electrolytes at any given location in the solution there is a electrostatic potential which tells you something about how easy ok or how difficult it is to add more of that species into the solution at that location ok. Um, <coughs> uh, or the other way of thinking about this would be that if I want to add a particular species into a particular location ok in this in the electrolyte solution I would have to do some mechanical work ok. And that mechanical work which is required to bring one mole of an ion ok from a standard state ok to a, a specified concentration and a chemical potential ok. That means, if I have a solution ok and if I want to add some species at that location ok. So, so the amount of work that I have to do depends on what is the local concentration of ions at that location and what is the electrochemical potential because of the charged species of a particular ion that is present at that location ok. So, again of course, at a chemical uh, you know if you say that there is something uh, if the uh, the solution as a whole is in electrochemical equilibrium again d mu i should be equal to 0. That means, I have mixed some electrolyte in solution and I waited for enough time ok I have let the system equilibrate ok at equilibrium d mu e is going to be 0. Therefore, uh, d mu i plus z i into f into d psi is going to be 0 ok. This d mu i ok we have already shown that it is r t d l n x i ok from the previous case right plus z i f d psi is equal to 0. Therefore, I can write d l n x i as I, I, if I take this term to the right hand side. So, minus z i f divided by r t right r t times d psi. Therefore, l n therefore, I can just say if I integrate this out ok. If I integrate this out I get l n of x i is equal to minus z i f by r t into psi plus constant ok. 
okay, that is what you get. Okay, and of, of course, if I substitute the limits that you know at uh, psi is equal to be 0 okay, at x i is equal to x i infinity you know if I do all of that. So, therefore, I get an expression which relates x i which is the, the concentration of a particular ionic species okay, at any given location you know is equal to x i infinity which is the concentration of the same species at infinity times exponent of minus z i f by r t into psi. Okay. And, and we know that f is e times n a v, okay. we are substituting for f as e times n a v and r t is related to the Boltzmann constant as r is equal to k b times n a v. Right. So, if I if I replace instead of r, if I put n a v times k b, this n a v, this a v gets cancelled. Therefore, I have k b t in the de denominator and z i into e is in the numerator. Therefore, x i essentially is equal to x i infinity into exponent okay, minus of z i e divided by k b t times psi. Okay. So, this essentially is the, the Boltzmann factor. Right. So, so, either you can define it or you can actually go through this route of chemi electrochemical potential and invoke the fact that when you have an electrolyte solution in equilibrium, uh, the uh, electrochemical potential is 0 and you can actually essentially derive the Boltzmann factor. Okay. So, now, um, okay, so that is what we have. So, we would like to solve this that is a 1D okay, Poisson equation you would like to solve that. Uh, this rho star okay, is summation of summation z i e n i because you know I would have to you know I could have a uh, you know case where I have a charged species you know uh, it is not necessary that uh, if, if I have a charged species I said that you, know, you should always think about counter ions being in solution. Okay. This is the most ideal case, right? I only have the charge surface and the counter ions which come only because of dissociation of charges on the particle surface. However, in general, so if I have a case like this, my rho star is only going to be just z i e n i, that is it. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, the counter ions being negative, so it is going to be minus 1 times e and Ni is going to be the concentration of ions in solution. If I say that there are 100 you know ions for example is going to be multiplied by 100 multiplied by 1 point you know 6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs okay, divided by the volume of the solution that gives me what is rho star. Right? This is the, the charge density right? the charge per unit volume right? that is how you get rho star. But however, in several cases what you will do is you will have counter ions because of the dissociation plus additionally we will also add a lot of salt right you know I you will always hear terms like you know I have a, a charge stabilized dispersion I have added 1 millimolar salt to the dispersion or I have added 10, 10 millimolar salt to dispersion right. When you have case like this I would have both co ions okay, as well as counter ions in solution. Okay. Therefore, if you want to calculate rho star I would have to sum up all the ions present Okay, okay. That is summation of Z. For example, if I if I have NaCl, for example, only NaCl, then uh, what we're going to have is uh, for Na is going to be plus one. Okay, times E. Again, the concentration. If the concentration is say one millimolar, for example, one millimolar. Okay, divided by. And of course, you have to convert that in number by using uh, you know uh, Avogadro number and all that. But but anyway, uh, plus I'm going to have minus one. That's because of Cl minus plus multiplied by E and I. Right? So, therefore, this rho star you would have to sum up all the ions present in the solution both co ions, counter ions you could have case where there, there could be multiple you know ions present in the solution. Okay? I would have to sum, sum all of them up. So, therefore, it is rho star is given as sigma i z i times E times n i. Okay? Now, z i e I am going to keep it the way it is and for n i I am going to substitute for the Boltzmann factor. 
okay and because <coughs> e and epsilon okay i'm if i'm working if i'm working with uh, a particular solution right i mean if the dielectric constant you know if the medium that you're using is like say for example water you know at a particular conditions i can you know your epsilon is essentially going to be constant so i can take minus e uh, divided by epsilon out uh, sigma i have z i okay i have n i infinity exponent minus z i e psi divided by k b t okay and this expression is what is called as a poisson boltzmann equation okay because we started with the a poisson equation okay we started with the poisson equation and then we use a a boltzmann factor okay uh, you know and then we obtain an expression for how does the potential vary as a function of you know a differential equation okay that counts the variation of the potential as a function of separation distance okay that is what is called as a, a poisson boltzmann equation okay